Mind Gap Podcast. Hey everybody, welcome to Mind Gap Podcast. I'm Doug. I'm Justin, and Doug, what was your most embarrassing moment from wearing braces? And if you don't like that question, you can say next, but then you have to take the next question. Let's go next. All Nothing right. super embarrassing about braces. Doug, what's your dream proposal scenario? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning I propose? You know what? Let's flip the script. What if someone's proposing to you? What is your dreams proposal? Walked right into that one, didn't I? I just yep. I opened up. You know what? I reversed the gender roles. Good for me. Um, uh, uh alone in the dark. <laughs> just Wait, someone you're, being like, you're hey. alone, just by yeah. yourself. Okay. Someone calls. Someone calls me. And goes, hey, dude, do you want to get married? And I'm like, yeah. You, okay, so you're getting a phone call at this. Yeah, I'd love okay. that. I'd love that. Or, or is this on message. a landline or is this on a text cell phone? message? Actually, I'd settle for a text message. That'd be cool. Okay. You know? Hey, you up? Hey, want to get married? You want to get yeah. married? I'd be like, yeah. Send nudes. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want a big display of affection. I don't need a public display for that. Let me you ask know? you, what would, what would your nightmare dreams or nightmare proposal scenario be then? Oh God. It'd be something where like, let's build that. Let's build that world out. Let's work what backwards happens? from there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's gotta be something like really, it doesn't even have to be public, but it has to be horribly cliche. Like okay. rose petals on the ground with a giant. So let's, you know, balloon that says, will you marry me? You know, like. just, just to really make it like, let's aggravate practical Doug too. So oh let's boy. say you're, you've, you've been taken on a trip to Paris. Oh God. Ugh. Unnecessary trip. You're on a, you're thing. on a boat. That's right. You're all, oh, you're on, <laughs> you're on the Seine. All right. You're <laughs> Someone bought a shit, boat. the shit filled Seine. Yes. And you're just tooling on down. Ugh. Uh, in in gay old Paris, and uh, all of a sudden, uh, your partner's like, "Hey, why don't you come over this way?" And everyone on the boat is waiting in like the galley area, like where the where I don't know what the galley is, but I, I assume it's like where you eat. Yeah, um, that'd be the food. The head is and- shit. <laughs> <laughs> so they go into the head. <laughs> everyone's in, waiting for you. Everyone's in the head. waiting in the bathroom. Yeah, no, everyone's everyone's on the top deck. They're like, let's go, let's go to the top deck and see. And on that top deck, you've got you've got the entire boat has been corralled. People against their will have been like, hey, everyone, come up. This will be fun, right? Oh, so now, <laughs> I know. Oh. So now you're sitting there, and you have a captive audience, and uh, and they have rose petals that have spelled out, will you marry me? And then Ugh. there's a giant, there's a giant, we did this once. Is it a Nylar or a Mylar balloon? <laughs> I don't know. Do, do you remember the episode we talked about no. this? We said it wrong I, the whole episode. I don't know. And then Hank came at us hot. No? Okay. What um, is a Nylar It's one of those balloons balloon. with your, with. Are you asking me or are you asking? With what? I'm asking. What? I'm asking you, man. What's a what's a, a oh, mylar I think we balloon? Um, yeah, you, it's like one of those uh, balloons you get at like Jewel. Ugh. Right. Gross. So it's a giant one of those, but it's got your face on it. It's you get you and your partner kissing. It's like this like just intimate moment that is just right there with all these. So now they say, Doug, they get down on one knee. They make it a, a way too long of a proposal. Like they start going into your backstory. <laughs> They start telling you why, what you mean to them. They might even like quote part of a song lyric to you. And then they ask you, will you marry me? Do, is that, do you draw the line and say, you don't know me? The only all? thing that would make that worse is if they were live streaming on their phone while they were doing it. That'd be the only <laughs> other thing that would make it worse. I'd be like, ugh. Yeah, nothing about that sounds awesome at all. I was going to say, did um, we hit most of the. You hit most of the things because none of that is me. None of those things are my interests. Like none of that. Right. Like I, that's not anything that you know. I'm not anti-French or anything like that. But I'm like, I don't want to go to Paris to you know to be proposed to. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to right. be in a boat 
to be proposed to. I don't want mylar <laughs> balloons, you know, like just, you know, everywhere. Like, I don't know, man. Like, I just like something small, intimate, personal, private. That would be that would yeah. be my jam. That would be my jam for, yeah. for that sort of situation. I don't I don't need the the grand. Uh, I don't know. I think it would be tough to be with someone who wants that grand gesture. I don't think I would doing, get along with him yeah. that, that would demand that sort of stuff. I'd be like, I I think you got the wrong guy. I don't think I'm the guy for you. Because well, because you know that that's, it's, it's, that's step the, one. Yeah. Like, th- like that that's would, I would assume that that person, the rest of your- that person also takes a week off for their birthday. And that's just not going to, that's not going to jive with me at all. I'm not going to be celebrating your birthday week, doing something <laughs> for you every single day. I, I'm just not that guy. I <laughs> Yeah. I like to give gifts, but it's incredibly stressful for me to give gifts. So the idea of being like, I have to celebrate you for a whole fucking week because it's your birthday. <laughs> like, no, I'm not doing yeah. that. That seems so self-centered and self-serving. And if you're the type of perfect person that does that, that's listening. Good for you. That's not who I am. And that's not really, I don't know. At some point I'm like, maybe when you're 12, you can do that. But when you're in your fucking forties, it's like, it's my birthday week. <laughs> Move over, ladies. It's time to celebrate. It's like for a week, really? Because right. you're turning forty-two. Like, I'll t- look. I'll take the day off of work for my fine. birthday. I think. I yeah. think that is. I I hold birthdays in a very high regard, and I think everyone at every job should get their own personal birthday off. But uh, as far as a birthday week goes, or people like it's my birthday month, I'm like, nope. Yeah, no. Take your nope. day off. That's fine. Celebrate your yeah. day. I'm not saying, but like someone's like. All right, I'm yeah. ready for my birthday week to begin now. It's like, oof, right. oof. There's a sense of <laughs> entitlement there that uh, I don't want to have anything to deal with. That sounds like a right. fucking nightmare. So, you, sir, Justin, or madam, seem like me, someone let me, who let would me turn propose... it around on you. What would be your okay <laughs> worst situation? Let me see if I could paint something for you. Oh yes, um, paint my picture. You're. <laughs> You know me, two elements that you can throw into this immediately. <laughs> I was like, okay, uh, a spider comes in with the ring. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, it always has to be some, you're standing in a pit of spiders. Why? Right? Yeah. No, you're in a room and there's a huntsman spider. <laughs> and the lights go out every hour. <laughs> I've been and here during before. one of those moments, it's going to propose to you. <laughs> What do you say? <laughs> does does one answer uh, end worse for me than the other? Because when he's not proposing, he's trying to get you. <laughs> so the only way to make it stop is to marry him. It's to know? marry it. Because <laughs> we all know that huntsman spiders cannot kill their mate once they're married. Mm-mm, they're, That's they huntsman are law. just perpetually monogamous. Right. They mate for life. Right. There's no divorce. But they mate daily. <laughs> they demand daily. They demand daily. Co- yeah. Copious amounts of copulation. <laughs> ah, yeah, that would that, that would not be good. If I was if it was in a dark room being hunted by a huntsman spider until I said yes to their proposal, that would definitely be a nightmare scenario for me. Right. It, yeah. it, it, it like it, it light turns on, it's got one of its legs up. It's holding a ring. And you take the ring and then it holds up another leg and it's like, you got to put it on its leg. Like you're, you're, it's proposing to you, but you got to put the ring on its leg. <laughs> but I have to put the ring on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and you're like, I'm not a fan of this. <laughs> to the, I wed, will you marry me? It's like, you shouldn't have. What a surprise, you know? <laughs> See, that feels like what a huntsman spider would do. It wouldn't propose to me. It would force me to propose to it. Yeah, that exactly. would be that'd be what. Yeah, that's its mo right there. It chuck you a ring and be like, "So you gonna do it? You gonna pop the question?" <laughs> it's, I provide it you with everything, all leg. the necessary materials to do this. So now get to it. And it lifts up another leg and it's got a wristwatch and goes ten seconds till the lights go out again. <laughs> Choose wisely. <laughs> Choose wisely. Yeah. Lights are going out soon, and then I'm gonna try and eat you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting over being sick. I'm sorry, y'all. It's okay. It's just, we accept it's just it. who I am. It's we accept you I for am. you, Doug. Thanks. She likes me for me. Not because I just like... I don't know how the song goes. I forget it. Carson Daly? I don't know. 
Um, did you he likes uh, me for the- me? <laughs> it's by Hey Leonardo, by Blessed Union of Souls. Never realized they misspelled blessed. That's interesting. Anyway, you were saying. I was going to say, in regards to the first question, did you ever have any uh, any awkward things with braces, or did I have any what? I'm any, sorry? any any awkward encounters? Any awkward encounters with braces? Going back to the first question, did that ever? Uh no, no. Like my teeth never got locked on someone else's braces, or right, right, anything like that. My mom just put a horrible tick in my brain that, like, I had because I was going to have braces and food would get stuck in there. I would just have perpetually bad breath. So she required really? me to carry around lifesavers and other like, like breath freshening uh, stuff to chew on because she's like, your, <sighs> your, your mouth is going to be just a gaping butthole that is just Halitosis Cochrane. It's going to be just perpetually just repelling everybody. And so like, I remember Man, part of our a number. ritual of going to get groceries, just buying lifesavers every week. Uh, and I would have them in my pocket and sometimes I forget to take them out and they go through the wash and, uh, you know, it'd be, it'd be those guys. So yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. All right. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's real. I'm telling you, man, the woman did a number on you. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. I had, a, I had a realization over the weekend where I was like, you know, they didn't make it to a lot of my games and stuff. And they told me it's because they were busy, but boy, they loved me and they just couldn't make it to all of them. And I was like, oh, they didn't want to go. Right. <laughs> yeah. They were just they, like, they, we should, they, we could just tell them we're busy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I just didn't want to go. Cause like they, she almost incepted me into thinking that like, because these other kids' parents went to every game, like they were losers. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Because they had like nothing better to do than to go to their kids' games. Wow. I just woke up on Sunday and had this realization because like Natalie's playing softball and I just popped in my head where I was like, oh, I wouldn't want to miss any of Natalie's games if I could help it. You know, like it's a bunch of eight year olds just doing terrible job at softball, but it's fun and she likes to have me there and I like to be there. Right. I like to cheer her on. And I'm like the idea of, and the way I kind of know this is true is that like my senior year, all of a sudden it came real important to get to as many games as possible because I was going to be leaving soon. So it became a huge priority. And one particular situation, my dad, who was a division two track coach was coming back from a track meet. Okay. And he diverted the bus <clears throat> to go what? to one of my football games. Now, at the time, I'm like, well, that's really cool. My dad was like, I got to see my son play. And he basically diverted the bus and like they came to the game. And these these women athletes were like forced to watch bad <laughs> class 3A football, Missouri football on a Friday night. And like I said, at the time, I was like, that's cool. Looking back on it now, I've been pissed if I was one of, of those athletes. I'd be like, I want to go home. I'm tired. Right. It's late. I don't give, I don't want to watch your son play football. Like, this is crazy, you know? So also, I, I feel that, like that's not, and it's like, probably, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know how legal it, like, is that not, I don't know. It just doesn't feel on the up and up. <laughs> you know what I mean? No. I just, I don't know. It's like, it was a, <laughs> I'm sure he meant well, but I'm like, that's weird that you did that. Now I'm like, you know, that's weird. You know, the idea that like, well, Doug, we got to go see Doug because he's a senior now. I'm like, cool. All those other games didn't matter, huh? All right. Good to know. (laughs) Good to know. Your dad was a collegiate level coach or high school? Yes. Division two collegiate coach. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So uh, there you go. Yeah. Don't know. Remember why I got on that? Oh, yeah. Mom. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> mom and bad it always, breath embraces. It always goes back to Ma. Always goes back to Ma. If you speaking of Ma, if you want to be part of a real family, because at the end of the day, you get to choose your family. Be a part of the Mind Gap family by checking out the link in the description down below at youtube.com slash mind gap podcast. Join our Discord and join in all the fun of all the fun stuff we got going on there. We're we set up game nights and we just shoot the shit, share memes, all that good stuff. Share advice. People have questions and we try to help each other out. A lot of fun. You can also check out links in our description for, uh, you know, all the pathways on the internet to our Patreon and our 
uh, our merch at redbubble.com. And you can check us out on our social medias at MindGap Podcast as well. So all that good stuff tucked up high and tight, nice and neat, very firm and very supple down in the mm. description. So don't be don't be a creeper. Get on down there, you know? Right. <laughs> just don't be a check out, don't be a prude either. Just check out around. that. Oh, I wanted to bring back a joke, but it's not gonna work because no one knows what we were doing. But you know, check it out. Before. Link in description. <laughs> That's growth. Because old Doug would have just done it anyway, you know. And gone yeah. like, well, they'll either get it or I'll go into explain. There's no way mode. they would. There's no way they would get it. But I would have pushed forward anyway. <laughs> right. And I was like, it would have been funny to me through. in the moment. But yeah. it's like, and then you listen back to it. It's like, what the fuck? That was such a random thing to say. I'm like, <laughs> inside jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Time for some ads. Yeah. What's up, fucker? If you're like me, you're probably sitting in your cubicle right now wondering if stapling your tongue might be more fun than your job. Well, say goodbye to the daily grind and hello to freedom with FThisIQuit.com. At FThisIQuit.com, your one-stop shop for all things I quit. We provide personalized resignation letters that will make your wa- boss weep. One-on-one coaching to help perfect your dramatic exit speech, tips on how to steal as many office supplies as possible, and a packet of special fuck you awards you can print off and distribute to your fellow corporate drones on your way out. Because why burn bridges when you can take a flamethrower to them? So, if you're ready to turn that two-week notice into a two-second peace out, head over to FThisIQuit.com and use promo code MindGap at checkout for 10% off your first escape plan. FThisIQuit.com because sometimes burning bridges is the only way to light your path to freedom. I like that company. I'm glad they decided to advertise with us. I am too. It's, yeah. I feel like it's a service that many of us could use. You know, getting, you know, quitting or getting fired or all that sort of stuff is kind of like a rite of passage, not unlike getting your license. Very true. True Very words, true. Doug. True words. Uh, interesting article here uh, from USA Today. Gen Z is less likely to have a driver's license, which I found fascinating. <clears throat> um, they For some stats... They said between 1983 and 2022, the number of 16-year-olds with driver's licenses declined from about half to a quarter, according to the Department of Transportation. At the same time, 18-year-olds with driver's licenses dropped from 80% to 60%. Younger members of Gen Z, which is basically people born between 1997 and 2012, are either entirely opting out of getting their licenses or delaying the process. Since 2000... The number of 16-year-olds with driver's licenses decreased nearly 27%. Those aren't rookie numbers. Those are some those are putting up some big numbers those statistics are. Those are huge numbers. Yeah. And, you know, part of the reason why they say that, you know, these younger folks are not getting it or not not driving is one is just uh driving anxiety. Uh mm-hmm. it's a lot. Um <clears throat> Yeah, uh, they said Washington Post last year reported that incidents of road rage and aggressively driving were on the rise. Uh, hostility on the road is intense. Not to mention that it's just expensive as fuck to buy a vehicle. I know. I just bought one again. <laughs> you just went through the whole rigmarole. Went through the process. It's not easy to get a car. Uh, yeah. It's expensive. Interest rates suck right now. Add on top of that uh, insurance plus just regular maintenance, it's a fucking investment mm-hmm. to get a vehicle. Um, and it's, it's, it's tough, you know, and, and, and plus you also factor in that you've got services like Uber and Lyft, or in some urban areas, you've got the little scooters or the mm-hmm. Divi bikes or things of that nature that makes it a lot easier for people to get around and it's more cost effective for them to do that. It's like, yeah, why, uh, why would they be getting cars? I mean, when you and I were younger, we didn't have, like, if there was no lift. So, like, if we wanted to do the equivalent, you'd have to call a cab company True. and actually have them come to your house, pick you up. And, like, there was no there was no just hailing a stranger's car and being like, can you take me here? Mm-mm. That just didn't exist. So, yeah, I mean, it was, I do feel like the technology plays a massive part in this. But at the same time, I do, you know, like our generation, there was statistics when we were coming up, coming of age, statistics that we were 
you know, uh, they're getting married later and they're having less kids. And then, you know, with uh, it, it's it, buying houses, they're, they're, more of them are opting to rent. And it's like, that's not really a choice. That's just, we can, the people can't afford houses. Mm-hmm. And so I, I feel like each generation that, that comes through these norms that have been set for decades prior, I feel like there's like, there's norms in every generation that get bucked for different for different reasons, you know, and mm-hmm. for Gen Z, we had, you know, the the question for a millennial is, are you going to be able to buy a house? And the question for Gen Z now is, are you going to be able to buy a car? And then because Gen you Alpha definitely is, can't afford a house, so you right, know. yeah, are you going to be able to live in a car? That's their, yeah. <laughs> that's their question. Yeah. But I feel like with technology coming in, and then also just things, the barrier to entry going up on everything, like it's it's kind of a, a one two punch that people don't. People don't need it anymore. It's not a necessity like it used to be. It's you know, it's I, wild to me because I remember when I turned 16, boy, all, all anyone could think about was getting their license because <laughs> it just meant freedom. It meant it meant I now have the opportunity to drive myself to school, drive myself home from school. I can go hang out at my friend's house. I can go out and get food. Um, I just the, the fact that I didn't have to rely on my parents or a friend mm. or a sibling huge. to get me from point A to point B just was like, it was absolutely game changing where yeah. I, I, the best summer of my entire fucking life was the summer after my sophomore year, because I went over to my buddy Colby's house almost every goddamn day, drove myself <laughs> over there and we would play music. We would play video games, we'd burn CDs, and then we'd go to the good old come and go and we'd get ourselves a 64 ounce uh, cup of soda and we'd drive yep. around. And it was- and, the, that was and that was the night, you would drive around. It was, not, there's, talk about an American, <laughs> right. American summer right there, man. That just, was- Yeah. Whew, no best. destination in mind, just hop in the car and just- cruise well that, and we'd have we, we'd, we'd have jack's pizzas we'd warm up jack's pizzas to eat and just man we just lived we yeah. just lived that our sounds like a hell of uh, a fucking summer oh my god we would play diablo the first one and we played counter-strike and we played team fortress like that was just played that relentlessly on a loop and it was so much fun that's fucking and awesome. holy shit but i was only able to do that and it was weird because I was over at Colby's house almost every day. And I realized that was strange because like I got to choose, like was, I almost became like a, a third son at the house. I was just like, Hey guys, it's like, Oh, Doug's here again. You know, just like, I was just there all the time. And, um, I wasn't able to do that without a license, you know, without the ability to drive and go over there and, and get that and just have an opportunity to escape you know, yeah. just to have my own time. It was, it was so freeing. Was it, was that, what was your experience like? So my experience, I was lucky because I uh, was the oldest one in my class, July birthday, late July Ooh. birthday. So <clears throat> my mom had to make the decision or mom and dad had to make the decision. I always like to tell people in preschool, I refused to color inside the lines. So they held me back. I was a bad boy. There you um, go. But that made me the oldest person in my class or, or one of the oldest. So in my group of friends, I was the first person by a mile to get my license. And so I became, for me, it was, it solidified my popularity within a certain group of people. I was Mm -hmm. like, I was the one they looked at. And also my mom at the time had a a Ford uh, Windstar. So it was a a minivan from the nineties and it was uh, the, the big green machine. And I could pack a lot of people into that van. And so, for me, it was wonderful because I was the go-to chauffeur for everybody. You know, we'd, <clears throat> we'd and, and then come, uh, what was it? Come, I mean, this is a couple of years later, but come senior year, we had off-campus lunch. And mm. so, you know, if you had your own car, you, we, everyone yep. packed into that and we took off and we went to Wendy's or whatever you wanted to do. So like having a license at that in high school was, was it was such a, it was paramount. Like that was, that was such a, uh, uh, an important part of gr- at least growing up at that time we you mm-hmm. needed that. Like you said, that it was that key to freedom. I yeah. used to, if I was going to go over to Bob's house, like Bob and I met in eighth grade. So we had, you know, grew up together. And if I was going to go over to his house, I, if I didn't have 
a license, I would have had to have biked and he lived in my adult brain. Now I'm like, it would have probably taken me a half hour to bike. There would have been nothing, you know, but in my brain back then I'm like, Oh, he may as well live in the next city over. Like he's so far away. I can't, how am I going to get over? It's going to take me a day. Like, you the know, idea so of biking for 30 minutes as a kid just, just to get to your friend's house, it's you know? so far away, man. Right. <laughs> yeah. Anything could happen on the way there. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I might have to pack a, a sleeping bag. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I have to get couple, some supplies. You know? I'm about to ford the river. Exactly. I'm like a dysentery. You know? I died of dysentery. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, but so, yeah, but having that having that car, as soon as I got that, I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm on my way be there in five minutes, pick them yeah. up, do reckless shit, mm-hmm. horribly reckless shit. But yeah, you know, that was, that was part of the game. That was part of what you did. I, it yeah. would have been very uh, different had I not gotten it. That's interesting. I wonder if there's a, um, if the stats were to break down by like rural versus urban, because mm. obviously, <clears throat> um, you know, the, the more urban the area, then right. obviously the less like, cause I mean, if, I grew up in the city of Chicago. I'd be like <clears throat> taking public transportation. I would never get a goddamn car because why the hell would I want to drive in the city? That sounds like uh, an absolute nightmare. 100%. Versus yeah. versus more of the rural areas where it's like or even it, suburban, right? Like growing up in Schaumburg, like that. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine you know navigating around your town without a car? Well, that's the reason why. Like, I got a second car when we moved out here because I was like, right. Jill and I are going to have to. Mm-hmm. share this van but like i have to go different places at different times so there's the, i was like i'm like i'll take the pace bus i'm like the pace bus doesn't run like the city bus or the trains in the city i was like oh this is a nightmare the cta like, you are not <laughs> yes and i was and that's saying something um i was like this isn't this isn't gonna work yeah so yeah. um there is a there is a graph here showing like by state um it's weird because like like Ohio, for example, it's like 20% less drivers. That's crazy. Michigan, almost 25% fewer yeah, drivers. Yeah, current drivers in 19 and younger. Yeah. Yeah. Indiana, massively high. Uh, Kentucky, god dang, man, almost 40%. Illinois has gone down, you know, Missouri. Like there's some of these places are just like. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. Like, I, I don't. That's wild. It's it doesn't. You know, Florida minus twenty, almost twenty five percent fewer. And I don't New look York, at like some place like Florida, forty five percent. Yeah, it's like you know Florida. I'm like I don't see that as a place that really is you know not drivable. You know what I mean? Like you, I feel like you need a car. Oh, absolutely. To yeah. exist down there, um, <clears throat> I don't know, man. That's interesting. That's so interesting to me. I would love to, you know, if you're out there and you're part of this group, this Gen Z group. Uh, your age 24 and below, uh, hit us up. Let us know your thoughts on this. Like why you don't have a car, why you don't want a car. Because trust me, mm-hmm. don't get me wrong. I fucking hate cars. <laughs> I wish I didn't have to have one. Right. It fucking sucks having to do I'll- a fucking car payment and yeah. do maintenance and then fucking um. insurance and gas sucks. Like, it's not fun at all but here, to have. But here's the thing. It's not even getting the car. It's getting the license. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, that's. Yeah. I feel like that's the real question. It's not why don't you have a car. It's why don't, like, if you are one of those that don't have the license. Because mm-hmm. in, living in Chicago, you know, I, I used to love not having to have a car. I thoroughly enjoyed. Yeah. You know, call me a freak, but I thoroughly enjoyed taking the seat. It was so convenient. The CTA oh, I love the CTA. It was the best. Down where we used to live and we lived mm-hmm. across from each other in the South Loop. Like you yeah. you had the red, orange, and green line right there. The bus. You had like divvies. You had, like, easy easy access a, to the – you could get anywhere uh-huh. you wanted in the city. Yeah. Get to any airport you wanted. It was Absolutely. so easy to access everything. So, But at the same time, loving not having a car – but I'm very happy I had my license because yeah. should I should the need arise where I had to get a car and go out to Schaumburg or to the Quad Cities or to whatever the hell it was, you know, for mm-hmm. two East State, we needed a car for whatever. I was able to go get one, drive it. I knew what I was doing. So just the, the I guess it's more so the concept of not having a license is like I get not having a car and, and why cars are annoying, but just not having a license on the off chance that you need to drive like if if you were put in a position where like should I need to get behind the wheel for for whatever reason like just just to 
for the fuck of it, just to have it. Like that's that's where it's just it's it's still not. Cl- I understand the the data. I just like to, the rationale, the 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 personal rationale behind it is fascinating to me. Well, it's a bold move to basically be like, yeah, I'm not driving. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm so saying. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not even gonna get a license because fuck that shit. I don't, right. I don't even want just it. have it for it. backup. You know. Yeah. I guess you're going opting for the state ID instead. Um, One would I assume, mean, yeah. You know, because like, what if you need to rent a car or whatever? Like, you know, having that <clears throat> ability to do that, I think is pretty important. But I don't know. I think I, I'm fascinated by that. So like, yeah, if anyone's out there is like, and yeah. I'm not shaming anyone. If no. you don't want to get your license, you don't get you. That's fine. I'm just, I'm genuinely curious about the why. I would love to know more about yeah. that and the predicament you see yourself in and why you'd be like, yeah. I'm not even going to fucking try to get this, you know, right. like <laughs> tell me more, man. Cause I'd love also, to, to know more about it. Young, young, young people. When you're all the young people that listen to this show, which are, are plentiful. Uh, when you're reaching out to us and letting us know about the license also uh, weigh in on this whole uh, uh, ankle sock versus calf sock thing. Cause I got to understand why, uh, why we're Jill going brought back. this up recently. I don't know what's going on with this. Why are we going back? Yeah, I, I still I st- and look, this is where I understand. And I understand now, like I look at this and they're like, oh, you know, ankle stocks. All right, grandpa. And in my mind, I'm like, no, ankle socks are young. And I'm sure when we were younger and we saw people wearing ankle uh, calf socks and we were like, oh, calf socks, grandpa. I'm sure they were like, no, calf socks are hip. That's what that's what we do. So we're in that age now where I'm like, no, no, what I'm wearing is in. Well, I'm just like, I don't, I never enjoyed wearing socks that long. Like (laughs) I prefer them. Like, I don't like, you know, the things that are so, I want my, my socks to comfortably fit to my foot so that when I put on my shoes and walk, they don't slide down. That's the the only thing I want. Yeah. I want them to be comfortable. I want to make sure I don't get any sort of, uh, blisters Mm -hmm. or things of that nature. Length, as far as I'm concerned, I never really enjoyed them going up, uh, up my ankles. I don't like the feel of it. Like it's no. just, it's not even a look thing. It's just a feel thing for me. I don't like the way it looks on me either. Yeah. So, um, but if people are into it, that's cool. You know what? I'll it's always funny be. To see. I'll always it, be an old old man at heart. So that's fine. I yeah. still like. Car- I'm waiting for cargo shorts to come back in because I didn't. I never they let come them back go. in. Or did they know, come I mean, back in and then leave again? And you're waiting for them to because everything's it's it's all secular. Right? I like having lots of pockets. Okay. I like. Yeah. It. I got. Something for everything. I'm good. I'm fine with that. It works for me. I've never been a man of fashion, so I don't really care. I'm going to go wear what's comfortable for me, and that works for me. But yes, weigh in on the socks, I guess. I prefer my socks also not to have holes. So there you go. Ha cha cha cha. You prefer not to have holes? I would like them not to have holes in my socks. Unfortunately, I wear my socks down to where they get holes and then I have to say goodbye to them. So sayonara socks. Do you, sayonara. I want to, I'm curious, this is completely uh, mind gapping it, but let's do it. At one point in our history, you had, speaking of wearing, wearing things until they're unwearable anymore. At one point in our history, um, you did not like the idea of owning two pairs of shoes. You owned one pair of shoes. Your argument was, because I think Jill made the argument, why don't you get two pairs of shoes and then you alternate them and they don't wear out as quick. And you're like, false. If I, two pairs of shoes will wear out in the same amount of time. Two pairs of shoes that I alternate will wear out in the same amount of time as if I wear out one pair of shoes, buy a second pair of shoes, and then wear that pair of shoes out. Are so we looking you were, for an you, update on, on my yeah, like, uh, where, ideology where you, on this? Where do you stand on that now? Uh, I was, it was the, the most random thing. I think I was having a conversation with either Rob or Egg that came up and I'm like, Doug had used to have strong opinions on this. I, I mean, I still do what I do. I buy a pair of shoes. I'm like, these are my walking shoes. Yeah. And I wear them when I walk until they fall apart. And then I get another pair of shoes. <laughs> That's just what I do. But like, what about like everyday shoes? If you're just going out to, you know, if my you're feet are the mall, so like. Like I have to have like ultra supportive shoes. Okay. Otherwise, you know, <clears throat> bad things happen, you know, and uh, then you have to hear me say, I have plantar fasciitis and nobody yeah, likes okay. that. Um, 
for my week that I was in Seattle, um, I had like my my nice comfy walking shoes, and then I had like my casual shoes mm-hmm. that I wore, and my feet were killing me by the end of the week because I spent so much of the day in my like, and they were just like they were tennis shoes. Yeah, but they weren't as ultra supportive. They were more they're like, these are nicer looking shoes. And like <laughs> I would still walk like 10, 15 minutes to go from like a, a restaurant to the hotel and my feet would be fucking killing me. And I'm like, I wish I had my big, poofy, unattractive walking shoes on right now because I know I'd be very fucking comfortable. Right. That's for I sure. Could, man, I could walk circles around you, you kids, if I had my yeah. big comfy shoes on. Yeah. So I have multiple pairs of shoes, but, yeah. um, you know. But each one has a very specific function. Uh, right. Like, I'm like, okay. how much am I going to be walking? Because if right. I'm going to be walking a lot, I got to wear my walking <laughs> shoes. If I'm just going to be, like, sitting down, hanging out, not doing yeah. a whole lot of stuff on my feet, I can wear my nicer shoes, my yeah. less worn out shoes, and put those on and exist and be okay. But I got to have, like, really good support on my feet. Otherwise, you know, the plantar fasciitis comes to calling, and I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Not one bit. It's a very practical man right here. Use use the thing. Man. He's always always has. Use the thing until it falls apart, then then get a new one. Don't mm-hmm. don't you no need for a new thing. Socks, shoes, whatever it is. Cars. Wait until it falls apart, then buy a new one. That's right. Begrudgingly. Wait until, wait until it falls apart and then go through the goddamn nightmare that is getting a new one. So <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um, so sticking in the car lane here. Yeah. Um I thought I heard Listen, I heard this you're going to you're going to try and fall asleep on us at first but bear with us okay cuz this is going to lead to something so hang tight all right I heard this on NPR this morning NPR Are you all excited yet? Yeah. So I heard it on NPR this morning uh and it got me I was like wait I haven't what what is this? So I was like I got to bring this up to Doug. So Michigan may test out a gas tax replacement using a $5 million pay-per-mile pilot. Now, let me explain this a little bit. If you Michigan need to change your have... underwear right now because you got like super excited, yeah. go ahead and do so. Michigan doesn't have tolls, right? Uh, or at least none that I've seen. So the way that we pay for highway infrastructure and stuff is, uh, and, and road construction is via a gas tax. But with the rise of EV, uh, you know, electric vehicles, hybrid vehicles, with fuel efficiency getting better, that gas tax is not paying off as much as it had in the past. And it is only going to get worse. So Michigan's like, "Uh uh-oh, how are we going to deal with this? So now they're proposing a couple different ideas. And the leading one that they're going to pilot and do some research with is one where you will be, and I think it's only for electric and EV cars, I think, uh, or sorry, uh, EV and hybrid cars. Um, They're with GPS. They're going to track when you get on the highway, how many miles you drive, and then when you get off and you will be taxed based on the the usage, the mileage that you drive on the highway. And I heard that and I was like, that's weird. And then I started thinking about it and I'm like, I don't like that because, and I know what the, 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 on, the online community will say, guess what, Strandlin, you're already getting tracked wherever you go. You got a phone, you got a phone, you're recording on it right now. They know where you are. I get it. But it feels different to have my car tracked in that way. Like to have the actual mile by mile tracked by the state and then to have me taxed on it. It felt weird to me. I didn't say I did not like it. And I wanted to get Doug's take on a practical Doug. This is my own personal ass practical Doug. Like, right. does that, would that bother you to have that? I don't disagree with the premise of let's tax people based on mileage versus Mm -hmm. gas because it seems like it is taking into account all vehicles um the collection of the data is seems like it's challenging um because uh they don't necessarily state exactly how they're going to do this um i know some people are like oh you just basically report on your odometer a couple times a year and i'm like all right well if you're gonna ask people to fill in a blank of (laughs) like i'm not saying that would be any better (laughs) You know, People, of like, yeah, yeah, check your odometer and tell us how far you've driven. I'm like, yeah, right. I don't think that's going to go Everyone well. Everyone keep a logbook, which at the end of the year, you'll mail in to us. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, it's uh, the concepts make sense to me. The execution and the, the actual tracking of it, it seems, I don't know, problematic. 
And then, sure. um, you know, I'm sure building tolls isn't super fun. Well, I would say the easier, to me, the easier solution, and this could just be coming from Illinois, is fucking build toll booths. Like, Or, I, I, I mean, I don't know. Are you a Michigan resident? Then fucking add it to your tax bill. You just get a general, like a, a blanket. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's another it cost? option. What's it cost to fix the roads? Right? How much are we getting? Yeah. What's the intended amount that you're that you're trying to get from the gas tax? And let's yeah, just apply that across the board and be like, here's your tax. Like I I don't mean you know just it's the roads tax. You know, I think the only upside of things like tolls is that you also catch people that don't live in the state. You know what I mean? Because you get anyone who's using it, which is kind of a nice benefit. Right. Uh, whereas like if it's like well if I don't live in Michigan and you guys don't have tolls, I'm never going to pay for your roads. <laughs> Well, right. So, and that's the thing. Yeah. Like I don't. Yeah. It's not if you just swing in. That, yeah. That doesn't capture. Because the gas tax the, is also like it kind of captures the people also. Absolutely. At the pump. Yes. So it's like yes. anyone who's getting gas will will pay for that. So that does also capture that. Outside of that, it's like, yeah, man, it's just only going to people be for people in the state. And then they have yeah. to they have to figure that out. So I mean, I don't know, I'm not super almost, into the idea of like tracking that. Yeah. That seems a bit invasive to me. Um. And then it just leads down a darker road, you know, of oh, very much. What else can we track people on? You know, for a while there, people were like, there should be a soda tax, you know? And what if they're like, well, here's what we're going to do. Right. We're going to implement a tracking device on everyone's toilet. And whenever you sit down, it weighs you. <laughs> and then when you're done, it's going to also take measurements of how much you have less has left your body, or it's right. going to take temperature measurements via your butt, which is the, honestly the only accurate way to get your temperature. I don't care what anyone else says. It's your butt is how really? it's, it should be done. Okay. And you know, it'll, as you flush, you know, you are consenting whenever you press the button to flush to give away your waste, it will then collect it. Right. And uh, it will read your urine. It will read your fecal matter. Biometric a, scanning. Does it all? It'd be like, hmm, Doug's been having a lot of macaroni and cheese lately, and it's affecting his stool sample, you know? This and then is, it can make some this suggestions. This is more mass to flush, and therefore Doug will get taxed more. That's right. How much are you actually, you know, uh, you know, if you're eating a lot of bad stuff and you're having a lot of bad diarrhea? I mean, because what is it? Does diarrhea, like, easier to flush, therefore... You know, is it right. better than a, a massive log? I don't know. Like it's that's liquid for, volume versus solid volume, Doug. Right? It's for the government to decide. You know, <laughs> I want I want the government making those decisions about. My I want the government in my toilet telling right. me what's going on. <laughs> Said no one ever. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, I know you're throwing away a lot of used <laughs> tissues, uh, and that's not all snot and mucus. That's. Uh, those are uh, gametes, you know. Those right. are uh, those are yeah. <laughs> those are dead dead cells. Those sir. are potentials. <laughs> yeah, what's going on there, buddy? You know. Uh, uh, yeah. The toilet would be a horrible one to mm -hmm. have, as far as like government overreach. That would be absolutely god awful. To, I just to it made have me think of monitor like, that. It made me think of like a bad version of Minority Report. Like in that movie, they're just constantly like, you know, scanning your eyeballs for things. Right. But there's a scene in particular where Tom Cruise's character is hiding out because he got eye, his eyes swapped out. And they send right, these right. little robot spiders to check people's eyes. And they're like, <coughs> citizens, please uh, stay in your homes and be prepared for spiders that will be coming to check your identity. Oh, and so people like know. It. They know the routine where they go and they do that. But I was like, imagine instead of the spiders, it's like, citizens of the building, it's time to do a scan. Please, everyone, make your way to your toilets. We will be scanning you shortly. It's like, that's please, how you tell people. Please squat and separate. <laughs> yeah, <he's> <laughs> cough, please. We'll make cough, sure nothing's please. hiding in there. You so know? instead of instead of precogs, these would be preclogs. There you go. Yeah. But it's just like it just rips the tension out of there where it's like, oh, my God, the police are here. We got to hurry up and sit on the toilet so they can check to make sure that we're, we're who we say we are. And just <laughs> plop down the toilet. And it's like, good to go. Good like, to go. <laughs> it's like, sir, Everyone's I'm going to need you to get on the toilet immediately or <laughs> lethal action will be taking place. You know, it's like a fingerprint. Everyone's is unique. <laughs> Everyone's ass is different. You know what I mean? Like You're just. Right. It's just, it reads it, you know? And so whenever, and instead of like, you know, walking around and getting <laughs> advertised, it's whenever you go take a pub, shit in public, 
You sit down, and it's like, hello, right. Justin. Welcome to the toilet. I can see you're feeling a little bit lighter today. I guess somebody's working out. Keep up the good work. Did you know that LA Fitness has a deal on... <laughs> You could use some AG1, you know, like. <laughs> it's, it serves you ads while you're sitting on the shitter. Personalized, personalized ads oh, that you can't my skip. my face hurts. That's fucking amazing. Yeah. Yes. You've been pooping for a long time, Mr. Anderson. If I could possibly recommend a healthier option for lunch today at the airport. <laughs> skip Sabaro and head over to, like, whatever. Uh, <laughs> I'm feeling a new ad coming up. I feel right. like someone. I feel like there's a new uh, a new advertiser coming our way, Doug. Yeah, <laughs> it just reads uh, it reads your DNA from your ass, and uh, you know, or it's like it reads your pee as you're right. peeing in the urinal. And it's just like, oh my god, mm. I can't skip this. It is what it is. Right. Someone had asparagus last night. Congrats on eating your recommended amount of vegetables. Way to go! It's it starts like Way some bodybuilder. Go. It's like, are you getting your macros today, bro? You're looking a little low on the protein. You still got six hours left in the day. Make sure to hit your marks. You know? Close those rings, bro. Yeah, man. I can tell you need to uh, move a little bit more, bro. Let's go. Let's move it. (laughs) That would be awful. Especially as it's like super loud to everyone that's around you. Imagine something like a Cubs game. People are all in the bathrooms. You just hear cacophony of noises. As people oh, are trying those, to piss. At those troughs. <laughs> oh at my the troughs. God. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be absolutely oh, insane. It'd be they, awful. You sit down in the toilet and it's just like, I notice you're slouching to the left. May I recommend a chiropractor? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Your balls are touching the, the toilet water. Did you know? You're getting old. <laughs> Time to get that rectal exam. Yes. When was your last colonoscopy, sir? You right. Know? Jesus we could do it now. Christ. We could ping someone right now in the stadium. <laughs> it just knows. It's just got, yeah, it's, it's yeah. Please say yes to, conce- to consent or no to decline. Yeah. And someone outside just goes, yes! And then you yes, get probed. Yes, get in here. And then you get probed. Yep, that's how it works. That's how it works. So, yeah, I think uh, <laughs> I think that would be the worst one. I think... <laughs> Yeah. I think I don't. I look outside of uh, my car getting tracked. I don't want my ass getting tracked. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, that's fine because everybody poops. You know, that's one thing we've all learned. That's what the everybody book told poops. Me. Yeah, everyone takes painful shits. So you <laughs> everyone know. does. Okay, <sighs> I want to get to this game. I'm very all excited right. for this game. All right, so we've got a new game. We got a new uh, game. I've seen this on another podcast, and of course, the name is escaping me. But it's two British guys who are super into movies. And they have played sound bites, either sound effects or lines from movies. And the goal is for the other person to guess what that is from. I have four sound bites for Justin. And his job is to listen to these and determine what movie they are from. So here we go. Uh, to me, I, th- I think most of these are pretty easy, in my opinion. But also... Out of context, it might be challenging for Justin. So let's let's see how this goes. Justin, are you ready for your first? I one? was. I'm so ready. All right, here we go. I can I can see it. I can see <laughs> I can see the I can see the puppet. Like, oh man, give it to me one more time. Here I can we go. See it. And that's I knew this would happen too. I'm like, I can I can visualize. <laughs> so describe what you see in the scene. What do you see? So I'm seeing a Jim Henson, a little tiny Jim Henson like puppet. Mm-hmm. And I think he gets shocked and then like like runs away. Uh-huh. Is it Star Wars? It is a Star Wars, but which one is, he is get, it? Does he get shocked by uh by uh, R2D2? He does. Okay. I'm all right. I all right, I'm on the right. Yes. You have n- nine movies to choose from. <laughs> <laughs> so here's my thing. I don't feel like you would have chosen, out of principle, I don't feel like you would have chosen the last three. Just... All I said is you've seen all of these movies. God so. damn it. Uh... <laughs> uh... <laughs> I'm going to say it's from uh, Empire Strikes Back. 
Oh, you're is so it from, close. Is it from A New Hope? It's from Return of the Jedi. So that is Jabba's. Right. That is Jabba's. That's pet. right. It was just, for some reason I kept seeing him like like in or near like a trash compactor or some something on the yep. on the Death Star. Okay, but it was Jabba. Fuck, I yeah. knew it. Ah. And I didn't realize this that that little character's name is Salacious B. Crumb is the character's name. What a proper name for that little guy. Yeah, right. Salacious B. Crumb. Salacious B. Crumb. <laughs> So Love you were it. you were close on that one. You were real okay. close. You knew it was Star Wars. You, right. Like you 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 had the scene. I had the scene. You yeah. were darn close. I'll give you a partial credit for that Thank one because it was like that. it was like right there. All right, uh, Jabba. you ready for the second one? Jabba, wait, <laughs> Jabba. I was I was gonna play that as like yeah. <laughs> this is your hint. <laughs> All right, let's go. Number two. All right, here we go. What? Is- I'm not gonna lie. This is what I was looking forward to the most. <laughs> it was nonsense. <laughs> I was so looking forward to this one. Right, give, it, give it to me again. It's the Goonies. It is the Goonies. It is the Goonies. It's the Goonies. Oh man! Yes. Just, here's the thing: it it took me off guard the first time you played it. I was laughing too hard; I couldn't focus on it. I was laughing way too hard. And the second time, I'm like, "All right, I really got to focus on the the tone of the who's is it?" Yeah. Oh, that Holy one was so shit. good. That I was just, good. Yeah. My my hint to you is going to be like, "This is a scene that involves a man and a boy." <laughs> right. That would have made it worse. <laughs> <laughs> I know, because you hear it, you're like, there's such an aggressive shout what's, and like what's going whimpering. On? Something falls. I don't know. <laughs> you're like, uh, I don't know, I man. I don't know how I feel about over. this. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. Oh, good job, man. Way to go. Way to go. <sighs> All right. You ready for the next one? Yes. All right. Here we go. Shit, that could have been anything. Um, fuck. Here's the thing. Out of context, to your point, mm-hmm. like that's just random explosions. Like <laughs> out of context, that is that is very very uh, nebulous. Um, it's right. from a relatively famous. It's a pretty famous scene. Okay. Uh, unlike unlike the last one. <laughs> Here we go. All right, walk me through it. All right, so I mean, it sounds it so it sounds initially like it is someone firing and then someone returning fire. So like it's it okay. it sounds like a war like Things are being lobbed back and forth. Things like maybe flaming, flaming uh, projectiles of sorts. Um, I feel, I feel like maybe there's a, a ship in there somewhere that's maybe making a, it's dropping a hit and then psh, zipping away. Um, oh man, I don't know. The thing is, I'm trying to like. Because a lot of Star Wars stuff has their their blasters, their things like that has such a distinct, like you're like, oh, that sound, the sound of a lightsaber, like the weapons and that, the right. the sound design around that has such a unique. So that's I'm trying to go off of that. Like, is there is there something that is this a unique like, of a, a specific cinematic universe? You know what I mean? Um, I'm gonna ask for it one more time. 
Okay. I'm, and I'm sorry to the listeners. No! Okay, so someone's firing something, and I think that someone's dodging, and then eventually they get hit. That is 100% correct, everything you just said. Okay. All right, I'm going to take a shot. Is it is it the like the final battle scene from Endgame? Oh, no, it's not. No? No. I'll give you a hint. This movie yeah. came out in 1999. Oh, fuck. It's the bullet time scene from The Matrix. That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. Absolutely. Where he's on the roof and he sees the the agent and he's like, yep. Trinity! And he like starts slow motion dodging. Absolutely. Yes. Classic scene. You're right. That is a very famous scene. Okay. Yeah. Now, now that I'm hearing it, I'm like, okay, yep, that makes sense. You nailed it with that last thing. You're like, it sounds like someone's firing and it sounds right. like someone's dodging and then they get hit. I'm like, yeah, you described the scene That's it. <laughs> verbatim. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. Well, and the, the reason I didn't want to say in game was because it, there wasn't enough else going on. That scene, mm -hmm. that battle scene, anytime they're going up to Thanos, there's so much going on. And so yeah. that seemed way too contained, but I, I was like, I don't have another, yeah. I don't have another guess. So yeah. Um, Amazing. I said 1999. You're like Matrix. Got Ma it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> well, and also what a testament to good sound design, like right? in a film, like the fact right. that just hearing that I was able to describe, I got a clear picture of what was happening and it was an accurate picture. Like that's, yeah, that is, that is a master of their craft at work right there so well done to get the idea of like this is happening in slow motion you hear the right. explosion and the bullets are traveling and like yep. yeah it's like really sums it up really really well yeah okay. all right last one <laughs> i don't think you're gonna have a problem with this hopefully that doesn't put any pressure on you here we go I don't think you understand. Oh no, I did how it, didn't random I? Random these things are. I cursed you. <laughs> <laughs> Was it? A, is it? A, is it? A, is it? A, is it a, the speeders from episode one? Is it Anakin? Is a, a great it, question. That's is, a great <laughs> guess. It is not. Okay, give it to me again. <laughs> it's a vacuum cleaner. Ooh man, I don't know. This one's this one's tough. I'm not. I can't. Like, I, it sounds like a ship, or it's. Oh wait, wait, wait. One more time. Uh oh, I think he's got it. I think he's got it. Now, see, so the well, maybe I, the there's one right at the end. That's the key. Like something that comes That's up the key. at the end. Yeah. Is it? Is it? Uh, Return of the Jedi. Is it the speeders and the mm -hmm. and the uh, Endor? No. Nope. No, not Endor. Is it Endor? It's on Endor. Yeah. But yeah. No, it's not the. It's not that. Fuck. Is it in the Star Wars universe? It is not. <laughs> okay, I can put that out of my merry little head then. It is from an extremely classic film. <sighs> I mean, it sounds like an like a, a some sort of a. Futuristic engine powering up. Okay. Uh -huh. So we're, yeah. we're on track there. <clears throat> and it sounds more action-y. So I would say like not like E.T. It's not E.T. Right. I was like it, the, something more action-based than a sci-fi. Like, so it's, it's a sci-fi film, but it's more action-based than something like E.T. Yes. Maybe. Okay. God damn it. I feel like this is another one you're gonna tell me, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be you're able gonna to see it. You're gonna hate me if I tell you. And you I know, it. yeah. All right, fourth and final time, and then if I can't get it from this, I give up. Oh, there's this. There's a click at the beginning, which is like someone flipping a switch. Exactly. Is it Mac and me? <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I thought about it. I thought about throwing Mac and me in here, but I was like, I don't know if you've seen that. I've seen that movie like, like when I was a kid, I don't really yeah. remember anything about it. So I was like, I don't know. What do you got? This movie, up. this movie came out in 1985. 85, 85. Oh man. Tron. Not Tron. Fuck. Classic film. 
Here's the thing with with you specifically. I don't know if it is a classic film or. <laughs> that is a like, fair statement. I resent it, but it's you know you're out of I'm line. Like, you're like but you're classic right. film, and I'm, and they're like, oh, I don't know, and you're like munchies. <laughs> Garbage Pail Kids, you know? Right? <laughs> Classic. Um, all right. All right. I give up. I give. It, is it Dune? This is the no, sound of the DeLorean from Back God to the Future. damn it! <laughs> damn it! Oh, no! <laughs> this is when they're testing it in the mall, and Doc flips the switch because he's got the remote control. That's, so that's the, yep. the switch you hear. He flips, and then it starts powering up, and you hear that... At the end, that's the classic, oh, that's the classic noise. I'm so disappointed with myself. You did such a good job <laughs> because, more importantly, oh. you got this one. <laughs> it's that. It's that one. <laughs> and then the, <laughs> at the end, out yeah. of context, that is one of the funniest sounding clips. <laughs> I was so excited to play that one, and it did not disappoint. Your reaction sustained me. It was oh great. Oh, my God. So good. So good. Well, you right. did very well, Justin. You did very big, well. Can I say, big fan of this game. Cannot wait to play this one again. <laughs> I also a big fan. Uh, very fun. Excellent work. Well done. Uh, <laughs> let us know which ones you got, gang. If they were easy, if they weren't, let us know. Right. We'd love to hear all about it. Mm. Woo. All right. Justin, what do you have to recommend this week? This week, I'm going to go with Godzilla Minus One, currently streaming on Netflix. Uh, I was very disappointed. I didn't get to see this one in the theater, but uh, I was clued in. Hey, clued me in that it's streaming on Netflix, so popped it on. And uh, <clears throat> look, I'm not overly familiar. I talked with Drew about it, and he's like, he's like, I thought it was okay. It was good. He goes, the bar for, he said, the bar for me is the original Godzilla back in like, 57 or 53 or whatever it was. So he's like, that's that's the bar. And I said, that's fair. Uh, I don't have anything to compare it against. So I, with a clean, clean visual slate, all I have to compare it against is the Godzilla King Kong movies that have been coming out. This mm-hmm. one, wildly different. And I enjoy yeah. it a lot, a lot. So I think the thing I liked most about this one is the fact that it, it really focuses on the human element mm-hmm. of what is it like when you're dealing with, with this, with war, the fallout, the effect, what you carry with you, how can you can you eventually let it go and 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 put it to bed and kind of clear that and and to have a life and yada yada. So I just think it's uh, it's it it was a very interesting, a very well done movie, uh, and I would definitely say check it out while you can on Netflix. I was gonna try and get to that this weekend, but I was busy finishing up Battlestar Galactica for like. And Doug- what do you my, have to recommend? My third or fourth viewing <laughs> of the show. I actually yeah. purchased it. It was on sale for 30 bucks on nice. Apple on the Apple Store. Like it's 75 episodes for 30 bucks. I'm like Hell fucking yeah. done. Bought right. it. Uh and rewatching it was a real real <clears throat> treat. It's a great show. Uh it's the remake. It's the one that came out from 2004 to 2009. Uh fantastic show. Deals just with so many amazing dilemmas of trying essentially the human race is almost entirely wiped out by machines that the the humans had created and they have like less than 50,000 people and they're trying to find a way to survive in space and amazing a lot of philosophical stuff religious stuff uh debates it has a very heavy like uh uh post 9-11 iraq war like tone to it um it's great and i finally finished it up over the weekend and i was like ah that's nice. That's nice to have that. <laughs> Apparently, it is streaming on Amazon Prime, so you can check it out there if you want to go which and, and watch is it. Which where I will be checking it out for sure. I would definitely recommend it. I think it's a it's a really great show. It's, it was really successful, and uh, you know, I'm I'm very pleased about it. So. Awesome. Well, thanks for hanging out with this gang. As always, if you're watching us on the YouTubes, uh, youtube.com slash mindgappodcast, uh, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Please leave us a comment. Let us know about anything we talked about in the show. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to respond. Um, and be sure to follow us on all our social media at mindgappodcast. Be sure to check links to our Discord, to our Patreon, and to our merch in the description down below. And check out Justin online as well. 
on Instagram at Justin underscore Michael, spelled M-I-K-E-L. It's the fun way of spelling it. And while you're in the online realm, if you're the type of person who prefers to consume your podcasts in an audio fashion, then any place where you can find those audio podcasts, you can find us. Please subscribe, share, rate, review, like, all those things. But the big one is sharing. Let people know that we exist out in the world. It goes such a long way and helps us so, so much. And then TweeStaith.com, TweeStaith and all social media, LoveAndImprovFilm.com, LoveAndImprovFilm on Instagram. Woo! Well, uh, with that, I will say, Justin, thank you. Douglas, thank you. Listeners, viewers, thank you. And you all have a dandy fucking week. Mind Gap Podcast.